It was in second grade, and we had, like, a big meeting. The teacher said stuff like, do you know what it means to be gay, and is it a bad thing to be gay? And then he just laid down a few thing that was, like, no teasing about who your parents love. Love is love, and you, you shouldn't turn love into hate. That's basically what he said. A lot of kids in our school, they know the word gay because even kindergartners know it. Sometimes people at my school call each other like gay or something like that when they're angry at them. This guy came up to me and went, oh man, you're gay. And I'm like, what does that mean? Okay, so there's these two people. They're a boy and a boy or a girl and a girl. And they love each other. There's a boy teasing me for having gay dads. Oh, do you think you're going to be a lesbian? I hope not. We don't use gay like one, two, three, four, five, six, every seven seconds. But um, we will like say it sometimes. I wish more teachers could elaborate on it and talk about it more instead of like two sentences and then dismiss the subject. Teachers don't, like, do nothing. Like, if I get bullied, they'll help me, but not in the sense that they're teaching the other kid not to do it. That stuff lasts forever. It stays in their minds, and it, and it haunts them. So I think that it should be not accepted, and it should be addressed immediately. Yes. Elementary school kids know the word gay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, January 18th, 2012, and I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com. Also on YouTube is ddarko2012. Uh, you can check out all the headlines and links uh, for these videos in YouTube's video description. Uh, you can put in your email address there if you'd like to receive updates. Also on Facebook, I know there's some people that say, I don't do Facebook. Okay, well, whatever. You don't have to do it, but I'm putting it out there for people that do. Uh, there's a global government news group. You can go up there and check it out. You don't have to go up there and post every time you take a dump, but if you'd like to receive updates that way, you can. All right. Uh, do you believe that there will be a military conflict with Iran this year? So far, 67% say yes, uh, followed by uh, a tie right now at 14%, uh, no and maybe. So, all right. So you just saw that video there. It's actually from uh, October 2011. I came across it and looking for news, uh, but I'm just going to tie it into this because there was just too much news uh, on this subject to avoid. So uh, here we go. It says here, activist group pushes video to train educators how to teach 6 to 12-year-olds about gays and lesbians. And it goes in here and it says a human rights campaign, gay rights activist organization has produced a, quote, professional development film, end quote, through its welcoming, welcoming schools project for school staff and parents that feature six to twelve year olds talking about gays and lesbians so the first thing i thought when i saw this is uh... is what is well when i was six years old and this is a pretty good barometer of a lot of kids out there at my age i've mentioned this before going through a divorce um, you know um, i was actually i didn't actually speak or read until i was about six and not because i was dumb just because that's just the way i rolled so Anyways, the, the point is, is that what? I was trying to figure life out. I was trying to see how things were. Um, I was dealing with my own issues and that around me, you know, got moved to a uh, kind of a richer neighbor neighborhood coming from a poorer neighborhood. And so that was hard for me. And uh, I can't imagine, I couldn't, um, I can't imagine at that time being taught this stuff, man. And like I said before, I'm not against homosexuality. I just think that it's being promoted uh, for whatever reasons. And, um, and it's just I can't I can't imagine doing that or being subjected to that at such a young age, uh, when there's uh, uh, certain things that you know need to be learned at that time. Besides that, uh, why gay parents may be the best parents, gay marriage and especially gay parenting has been across uh, in the crosshairs in recent years. But research on families headed by gays and lesbians doesn't back up these dire assertions. In fact, in some ways, gay parents may bring talents to the table that straight parents don't. Okay, and it says here, gay parents, quote, tend to be more motivated, more committed than heterosexual parents on average. And, of course, this is 
what they say because they choose to be parents a psychologist said so you go in there and uh, check that out but uh, because they choose to be parents, it's kind of interesting. Uh, that's just assuming that most people uh, don't, you know, actually choose to be parents. They don't have love for another heterosexual mate and then say, you know, let's have a child, an offspring. Um, but no, it's always because of what? Oops, it's an accident. The condom, uh, there's a hole in the condom. It was a defective uh, uh, contraceptive and the pill didn't work. Oh, damn it. It's a mistake. So we're all mistakes, I guess. Elevated testosterone levels, we're all familiar with the term, it's a man's world. And that's, uh, or that mentality is having a dramatic effect on some women trying to make their way in it. I was going to actually post this video, but because it's from Yahoo, I didn't feel like wasting my time or uh, on editing it out and have to redo this video because of copyright infringement. So there's a growing number of women with soaring male hormones and the serious consequences that come with that. The disorder is more common in Australia than almost anywhere else in the world. Unusual fits of rage, emotional slumps, and even physical changes are all symptoms that are too often brushed over as stress or the side effects of a busy life. And they're talking about seeing massive uh, jumps in women with high male hormone levels, dangerously high amounts of testosterone that are not injected, like some athletes in the UK. Remember that report about uh, this... Um, it's antigens in the water and stuff, hormones basically in the water, and it's in the food too. So, but uh, the whole thing is to blend the male and female thing in together, uh, together as one. So, uh, talking about the social engineers, that is sex swap teenager to enter Miss England contest. So it says here, teenage transsexual has become the first sex swap patient to enter Miss England beauty pageant. So she's 18 years old. She was born Jack, but lived as a girl since age 10, when she probably received sex education. Uh, it says here, a gay teen filmmaker, Eric James Borges, commits suicide. So a gay California teenager who made an anti-suicide video last month, urging other gays to never give up, has killed himself. So this is what I, uh, and this is a sad story, you know. Um, this is what I've referred to as social engineering uh, blowback. So, and you're going to have that. Okay, so we have this. Begin sex ed in kindergarten, says new national standards report. By the time they leave elementary school, children should be able to define sexual orientation and by the eighth grade be able to define emergency contraception and its use, according to a report containing controversial new recommendations for sex education in U.S. public schools. Next, we have kids' sex education video like porn. This is all recent news, January 13th, so... Like I said, check out the links. A graphic video meant to educate school students on sex has drawn comparisons with pornography. This is the same thing that happened in China. I reported on that about six months ago. A sex and a relationship education program is produced by the BBC and is aimed at primary school students in the UK. The contents include a graphic video of a computer-generated couple having sex with explanations of what happens to body parts when that occurs. There are also videos of naked men and women and information about, quote, wet dreams and masturbation. So 30 years ago, there wouldn't even be a poll on this, but nowadays it's uh, more acceptable. So are 9 through 11-year-olds too young to be viewing content like this? Have your say below. So toddler's cuss word on modern family draws ear. So go there, check that out. Uh, Anti-profanity crusader on Tuesday asked ABC to pull this week's modern family episode in which a toddler appears to be using a bleep curse word. So. The only thing I want to say about this is, because I read the comment board, is that uh, some people are right. You know, if you don't like it, don't watch it. This is a depiction of society as a whole right now. So, and this is what is being promoted by the social engineers. But uh, it's been a while since I watched TV. It's been almost four years now since I uh, basically tuned out to television. So the only time I watch it is with, uh, when I'm with family members who watch it. And like on Christmas, I literally, I, I was sitting there. The Christmas prior to that, I was watching the TV, but it wasn't with a big, fancy, high-definition one, but I was looking at it, but I wasn't actually watching or listening to it, right? And then the next Christmas, this past one, the, the screen was so big. It was just so big that I couldn't avoid, but it was just like, it was hurting my eyes. I told my, I looked at my sister, I'm like, this thing is actually hurting my eyes and that, but they're all used to it. They're totally used to it, but it's a bunch of high-definition uh, uh, programming is what it is, brainwashing. Uh, embedding programs in you. So I would say just tune out. It says here, now shy children face risk of being given mental health drugs with 
650,000 youngsters already on Ritalin. Experts fear widespread use of powerful medication. So it says here, children uh, who are shy or considered moody uh, run the risk of being diagnosed with mental illness. So, And given powerful drugs like Prozac, psychologists have warned. Experts say mental health diagnoses are likely to increase from 2013 as new guidelines on the definition of mental illnesses are being drawn up in America and are likely to be replicated in Britain. So where are these new guidelines being uh, 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 written? Well, usually it's done privately. Uh, by the social engineers, and then they lobby, and they do, and they use the government, and they use uh, liberal people and the government to uh, to push this type of policy. So, so just imagine in 1986, uh, actually it was like 1985 when I was in kindergarten, and you know I didn't talk or something like that. I did talk, but uh, for the most part I didn't. I was just pretty quiet and shy. And uh, can you imagine if they were to start pumping me full of pills? I may not even be here today, uh, uh, making these videos. So. I mean, we're in a fight for our, just our, our, our lives, our minds right now. Fact, 80% of U.S. pharmaceuticals made with overseas ingredients, nearly half produced in foreign facilities, never inspected by FDA. Well, I don't really give a crap about the FDA. It just means that uh, you don't know where it's coming from, like your food. U.S. obesity epidemic shows no hint of shrinking, says here. More than one-third of adults and almost 17% of children were obese in 2009-2010, echoing results since 2003 since the CDC reported on Tuesday. Burger King's home delivery plan, a couch potatoes dream. America's number three burger chain is testing a risky new plan to get its mojo back delivering Whoppers to your door. Uh, then we have, should participation in vaccine clinical trials be mandated? It goes in there and references Bill, McGa Bill Gates and describe vaccination, the most effective and cost-effective health tool ever invented. He's talking about how to make people sick and kill them and reduce the world's population besides health care and Planned Parenthood. But they go in there and say they can't rely on people to volunteer anymore, altruism as they call it. Basically, like I was talking about, the liberals in government that are getting played. Um, they need... Uh, uh, more people, and they may have to do it mandatory because what? In recent decades, there have been a distressing decline in the numbers of healthy volunteers who participate in clinical trials. They say uh, the decline has the potential to become a key rate limiting factor in vaccine development. So that's why they go to Africa, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. I mentioned this before with their white vans and the mothers run the opposite directions, but now they've actually changed their tune and they're actually uh, at gunpoint in some countries. Uh, they'll vaccinate at gunpoint. So that's probably what they're talking about when they say mandatory. So these eugenicists come to the conclusion that mandatory involvement in vaccine trials is therefore perhaps more akin to military conscription, which I'm sure uh, deceased anarchists are rolling over in their graves hearing that. And then we get into utilitarianism, the lesser of two evils. You know, some people got to suffer, right? The greater good or the lesser evil. So finishing up, society is unlikely to accept compulsory recruitment to a trial for a vaccine against the common cold if the vaccine causes severe complications in vaccinees. Never seen that word before. Increase the severity of the disease in question. However, and compulsory recruitment becomes a more palatable option. Wow, dude. So we're talking about bioweapons. And of course, I've covered this before when this first came out, which was what, H1N1 swine flu. Scientists actually said that it looks like that thing came from the lab. So polio vaccines, now the number one cause of polio paralysis. The Polio Global Eradication Initiative found in 88 uh, says here that it holds up India as a prime example of its success as eradicating polio. I've covered that as well, stating on its website that India has made unprecedented progress against polio in the last two years. And on the 13th of January 2012, India will reach a major milestone, a 12-month period, without any case of polio being recorded. goes on and says that the numbers are misleading, and uh, they're talking about vaccine-associated polio paralysis. In fact, the clinical presentation of the disease, including the paralysis caused by the VAP, is indistinguishable from that caused by wild polio viruses, making uh, this announcement all the more suspect. So I, I remember covering that. Remember with the with Pakistan and China and how they found cases and they tracked it back to Pakistan and then I covered the whole thing about the Pakistan, or the polio shuffle and how the vaccines were actually uh, being uh, causing it. I mean, the viruses that they were finding were uh, vaccine derived. So and that was actually from a, a real research study from a university. Next up, we have Teen Girls Medical Mystery Baffles Doctors. So they still haven't figured out uh, this little research project. Remember, like IBM and all these global companies, the, the world is our lab. I mean, and we're the lab rats. And if you don't like it, well then, you know, hey, your kid could sit at home and then they could come and CPS and kidnap your kids from you if you don't allow them to be guinea pigs. 
So the experts uh, have made a diagnosis. It's conversion disorder or mass hysteria. In other words, it's not environmental. It's psychological. Quote, they need a psych uh, psychiatric or psychological treatment. Treatment does work. If you need to go vomit, I'll wait. Doctors raised doubts over a pandemic flu drug, saying besides it not even having proof that it works, that side effects were possibly underreported. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.